when you announced you were making this film, I went out and bought American Prometheus, that book right mm. there, and I started to read it, and I called my grandmother, who's 97 years old. My grandfather fought in World War II, and she said, Kevin, I'll, I'll read the book with you, and because uh, mm. she, she loves Pulitzer Prize winning books. And so she goes, well, let's get on the phone once a week together and discuss it, and I'll give you my perspective of going through that time period. And it brought me wow. closer together with my grandmother more than I could ever imagine. She's 97 in a nursing home. Wow. So I wanted to ask you, is there a film that has done that for you, that has brought you closer together with somebody, a friend or a family, that because of the movie? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, my father was a huge fan of uh, David Lean's Lawrence of Arabia. Mm -hmm. And in the 80s, they released a director's cut. They had allowed Dean Lean to go in and restore certain scenes. They found footage. They put a lot of care and attention to that in the mid 80s. I think it was actually Spielberg and Scorsese who enabled that. And so he took me to uh, the movie theater in Chicago. It was McClurg called. It was the big, the big screen there and watch it on 70 millimeter. And so I got to have, sort of have the experience that he had had as a, as a young man watching it. And uh, no, it was it was a very special experience. And I think movies can do that. They can bring people together in the most extraordinary ways. My father and I were in New York in 2001, I believe, and we went and saw a 35 millimeter showing of Memento. Mm. And I remember being so struck by the way you used black and white and color. And obviously what's interesting <laughs> about that film now is the color is subjective, the black and white is objective. Mm. You also have the similar situation happening here with the color and the black and white. And I wanted to ask you about what you learned on Memento using that style and having the idea of the color and the black and white subjective and then kind of how it kind of compares with to what you're doing here with Oppenheimer. Yeah, I think there's a very strong relationship. Uh, what I learned on that film was that it's a very helpful milepost for the audience. It's a helpful signifier of where they're going on the journey. And uh, I wanted to use that again. It's technically and aesthetically, it's an enjoyable way to work because the color is reinvigorated every time you come back to it. The black and white is special every time you cut to it. Mm. But more than that, it's a very important narrative technique for just trying to orient the audience. Memento was a very complex film, you know, all told backwards, all that. It really helped guide the audience through some feeling of orientation with a complex story. Mm. And with Oppenheimer, it's a differently complex story, but I really want people to feel the difference between when they're watching the color sequences, they're in his head, they're seeing just what he saw and experiencing the world the way he saw it. Mm. Black and white, we're more in Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Louis Strauss, we're more in his point of view. We're looking at Oppenheimer from across the room rather than right over his shoulder. And black and white and color is a nice sort of subliminal way of, of doing that. Yeah, and you know what's brilliant about the concept, and obviously with the Trinity test, I know you're not going to speak too much about the how you did it practically, mm -hmm. but I appreciate all your practical effects, the 747 crash with Jim Wilkie and Tenet, and obviously the Dark Knight flip. But to me, what struck me about that... Also scene, Jim Wilkie. Yeah, Jim Wilkie's amazing. I love <laughs> yeah. that guy. Is, did, was he involved here at all? <laughs> no, I didn't have... <laughs> didn't unfortunately, have he's more on the vehicle side. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing... He didn't actually need to ride the bomb <laughs> to, its, to its detonation, so no. But, I did, uh, but yeah. a similar approach to the practical, to trying to photograph real world things to give you know that first detonation of the atomic bomb was one of the most must have been one of the most hypnotic and terrifying things mm. beautiful and terrifying in equal measure and so we really needed to find a way in this film to represent that in a way that the audience could feel some of that that extraordinary sense of, of witnessing that first unleashing of the power of the atom. The last thing I'll ask you is this, when we leave your movies, mm -hmm. we leave affected. I felt this movie put an imprint on me. I have, you know, Interstellar and Dunkirk and Tenet, these are all films that have meant a lot to me in my life in The Dark mm -hmm. Knight and seeing that in 70 mil IMAX for the first time. But when we walk out, I feel like different. My life perspective shifts, uh, especially mm -hmm. the way you tell this story. But I always wanted to ask you on the other side of it, for you, how it changes your life perspective. What catharsis you find in telling this story? Is there anything that Oppenheimer and this story gave you that you will now take with you in your own life and that perspective of going forward? I mean, yes, nothing as positive as catharsis. I mean, the, the thing with Oppenheimer's story uniquely from my other films, and thank you for your kind comments about them, but the reality is that this story uniquely doesn't leave you with um, anything too comfortable. So yes, it stays with me in, in ways that <laughs> in ways that I almost wish it wouldn't. But that's the nature of the story. That's the story we're telling. It's a troubling story. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that we've told it in a way that's engaging and it's a strange word, entertainment, it's a strange word to use in relation to this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, that's the point of it is engagement and mm -hmm. excitement of watching the story. But it leaves you with 
uh, resonant and, and troubling questions. And that's, yeah. that's why I wanted to tell the story. Right. Congratulations to you. Thank you uh, very much. This is a true honor, and I really hope you Thank know you. how much your movies have affected me. I want to start off by saying when Christopher Nolan announced he was making this film, I went out and bought American Prometheus immediately. Right. And I started reading it, and I called my grandma, who's 97. She lives in a nursing home about three hours away. She's like, I want to read it with you because my grandfather fought in World War II. Oh, wow. So every week we'd get on the phone and we would discuss the book and then she would give me her perspective of the oh, time. Man. And just movies have the ability to make those connections. And I was yeah. wondering for you, is there a film in your life that helped you connect with someone in your family on a deeper level like this did for me? Well, I'm having that experience with my kids at the moment because mm -hmm. they're now teenage boys. They're 16 and uh, nearly 18. Wow. So I'm having that connection all the time where you know, I have, I have lists of movies that I very pretentiously think are the, the best, you know, the best movies ever made. And we sit down and watch them together. And like which ones? Recently, what did we watch? We watched Apocalypse Now recently, oh. like the, 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 you know, the Redux, yeah. you know, director's cut. And then what else did we watch? Oh, The Big Lebowski. You know, <laughs> some of these films that are like, for me, up there. And, and it's great to see them through the eyes of my kids. And, mm. and then we have discussions to talk about it. So, That's yeah, cool. movies do that, don't they? Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm mm. a big fan of little of de decisions and character aspects, the details about a character. Uh -huh. And there are things that like speak to him so much. The hat, obviously the yeah. pipe, but also the way he stands with his <laughs> yeah. arms like this. And I wanted to ask you, a, a, as an actor, what those three things gave you into the insight of him. Because at the end of the day, you're doing an interpretation of yeah. him, not an impersonation. Exactly, yeah. and I wanted to ask you what those three details, like, did you find when you put the hat on, it brought you to a different emotional level, or the pipe, or the way he would stand? The, yeah, really good question. The, 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 the pipe and the hat were um, sort of himself self-mythologizing. Hmm. You, you know, they were very conscious decisions. Um, so the hat, we, 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 we were looking for the hat really, really early, early on in the camera tests. I remember we found one really quickly and both myself and Chris kind of knew instantly hmm. that that was the hat. And then the, the, with the hands on his sides, I saw a lot of photographs because there's not that much foot, candid footage of him. There's lots of footage of him like, giving lectures and talking, but it's quite performative. Hmm. But there's lots of footage and he seemed to stand with one hand on the hip, one or the other hand on the hip. And there's a lot of pi uh, pictures of him with groves doing that. And I thought, that's very interesting. That's his sort of default sort of physical stance so I just used it mm. you know just these little things can be very helpful sometimes the characters sometimes the superficial stuff can really help with the interior stuff yeah the exterior stuff last line I want to ask you about is the theory will only t theory will take you only so far yeah it's a beautiful line it's said a lot throughout the film yeah if you were to apply that line to you as an actor yeah what do you think that line means to you in the idea of film theory or just theory in general about how far we can it will, how far it will take you and then kind of the leap you have to make in yourself uh, yeah that's a really good question i i i i i've always found that in my career like you can intellectualize and um go really really deep into work and it can become very heady and academic but ultimately when you get in the room with an actor and a director then it becomes about emotion and heart and instinct and I think that applies mm. in, in my game. I've always found if, it, if you think too much, you can kind of lose it. Wow. Well, congratulations to you. I hope you know what this movie's going to mean to a lot of people. And Thanks, man. I think it left an imprint on me that I don't, it's going to haunt me for a long oh, time great. in the best way possible. So Good. congratulations nice to you. Nice to chat, You man. did a phenomenal job. Uh, thanks, you man. really did, man.